Hello everyone, I am going to give a quick introduction to Dr. Prabha Manuratna's article Kolambata Kiri Apata Kakiri Neoliberalism and the 1981 Education Reforms. Um, it's in English, but like it's, it's a bit weird to explain an English article in English, but I think some of you may have missed uh, what this um, extremely important article, the way I, I, I look at it, is saying, and sometimes listening to it might be easier than um, reading it, but I would advise you, should education interest you or should what's happening in the universities interest you now, this should give you a pretty good idea of the what is at stake, right? And this follows, uh, this is going to be followed by a discussion with Dr. Prabha Manuratna. So it might be of interest to know what we are discussing. One thing she says, which I find very relevant to English language teaching also, though this is about education in general, is how she shows a systemic problem, a systemic failure had been turned into personal failure by the language that neoliberalism works on, works in, right? For example, say, let's take my, my context of trying to teach English to adults. There are hardly any teachers or good teachers in um, rural villages teaching English. They are trying their best. But some schools don't even have a teacher. That's a systemic problem. But when they come in and when they sit exams with the people who have gone into schools, which naturally are speaking that language or have people speaking that language, they sit the same exam. And we fail somebody and we pass somebody. And that failure will obviously be taken as a personal failure. So successful student versus unsuccessful student but really it's not a personal failure how would you expect someone to know a language that is not taught effectively in the place he or she grew up so that kind of turning systemic failures into personal failure is something that Man Dr. Manuratna has shown very effectively being done in this neoliberal kind of thought in which you are to take responsibility to your own development that's the that's the normal credo in that within that system which covers the fact that sometimes you cannot be responsible for the system that brought you there but by turning it into personal failure a lot of the blame is laid upon not on the people who are to be blamed but on yourself very dangerous stuff so that's why i think she wrote this in 2017 and she said in her interview that was when the Saitam protests were going on. She wanted to look at the history of what has been happening. And she picked these 1981 reforms, a very significant date, if you, if you um, think about it. Because in 1977, we got our economy was opened up to the world and we got the new neoliberal thought coming in with the economic system. It's one decade after the first insurgency, the single insurgency that happened in 1971 and about eight years or seven years before the second one was going to happen. So when you say the uh, youth insurgency that was in the south where the single young people protested and significantly um, she quotes Professor Jayadev Uyangoda who has said, you know, education also might have been, um, might have had a role to play in it because Professor Uyangoda has called this a one-way ticket. We opened out, the Kannangara reforms opened out to a vast sector in this country an equal, an equal field to get education. That's what the Kannangara reforms did. Pre-education plus turning of education into the Swabasha, the, the mother tongue. So that many people thought, fine, like now they are in a playing field. But it was a one way, like you could climb up. But at the top, no equivalent broadening of spaces for employment happened because that did not change. Those were still very much class-based. So all those who climbed up realized that there's a bottleneck at the top. Very few could actually get in and have high paid or high class or social, socially accepted uh, employment opportunities because the irony is, as she says, the very success 
of the edu free education program created a lot of frustration when at the top because those did not significantly open out to everybody they were still class based so she says in this article she does two things firstly she says i argue that the mismatch between education and employment that is often blamed for the crisis in education is sustained by a deeper class antagonism that the reforms try to manage and redistribute it's really class but these reforms try to deflect where the blame should go and said look it's a mismatch between education and employment and that is something we keep hearing even now no one would know that no one would not have heard that are the problem is our education doesn't match the employment what they forget is they forget that it's really class at the bottom of it which makes some doors be close to anyone who got the same education here secondly she says i argue that the proposed reforms mobilize policy and ideology to strengthen the discourse that the crisis in education and employment springs from youth dissatisfaction a discourse that turns a class related crisis into one about expectations affects and personal failure that is what i had explained before it's a class problem that has been turned into a discourse of personal failure very dangerous very dangerous for people who are trying to learn trying to come up come out of a system that has not been it's a systemic failure right so if by any chance if you are listening to this and if you are one of the people who might have laughed or might have looked down on people without knowledge of english or polish or whatever you call it remember it might not be a personal failure okay and i would always say we need to change the attitude of two sectors in our country <clears throat> if we are going to go beyond language issues one is the people who are learning to learn without a sense of inferiority the second one is for the people who actually have the power to open out broaden out chances for everyone not to judge too harshly definitely not to ridicule but at least know that what you might look as a personal failure what they might see as a personal failure might not necessarily be that of course if you are learning i would say work really hard you must you must work hard probably three times as much as someone who learned i'm still sticking to english someone who knows english and in in my uh, youtube channel i talk to people who have learned it the hard way and still managed to you know get phd's in um, and and write it in english it's possible but it will entail you working probably thrice as hard as someone who got english naturally so this is not to give up or say the system is unfair not my fault and rest learn knowing why you are in this position and if you understand it what what you might lose is a sense of inferiority which really needs to be lost if you are to have confidence in using any other language so she she starts by saying that and then she goes on to the the background for the 1981 proposals and you know if you are listening to me in english you can probably read this please do so i'm putting the link under my video so uh i wouldn't explain much of it except that um, she 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 gives a very uh, interesting framework to her discussion by quoting wendy brown who actually um was analyzing the us system um and these reforms the 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 educational reforms were not restricted to sri lanka as dr manuratna says in her interview it was sweeping the world and margaret thatcher was trying to do it in the in the uk and the us was also bringing in this um, there was a movement against welfare welfareism right sri lanka the the welfare system was solid it it, it made such a difference and in no way is this a criticism against uh, open you know free education it 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 equal the playing field for many at least at the at the bottom levels right and wendy brown has analyzed two things in her context which dr manuratna brings into the sri lankan context because it works beautifully because what wendy brown has done was show how the discourse of neoliberalism was put into the discourse on education and how 
it matched so beautifully that some, sometimes even now we forget to see where it's coming from. And she says two things uh, this did. One is responsabilization and second is devolution, right? So responsabilization is, uh, is defined as putting the, let me find you the uh, quote that she gives. Responsabilization involves making individualized individuals responsible for their social and economic improvement. That is what I was talking about, right? Glosses over the fact that the playing field may not have been fair and says it's up to you to improve yourself. These are very familiar uh, thing we have heard in Hollywood movies and all. You are responsible. Secondly, devolution. This is a definition. Devolution involves shifting the responsibility of organizing social and economic life into smaller units who often do not have real economic or political power to make any significant changes. So you devolute, the devolution is what the 81 reforms said. Secondly was, look, you are responsible. We will give you power to improve your own schools, right? Giving more responsibility for the, 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 the principals and the teachers and the parents. Fine, in theory. But if you are talking about situations in which they had little anyway, right? And they also tried to make this cluster school system where a cluster of schools, some had a lot, some had little, sharing their resources. Fine in theory, right? But if there was the responsibility was to make people who had little be given resources, but by making this transition, we devolve power into you for your own benefit. You know, the responsibility was given for them and it becomes a managerial failure, as Dr. Manuratna shows, administrative failure. Glossed over the fact that the real problem is not enough resources, right? And she said, because of the devolution, a lot of bad things happened. One was, it opened the door for corruption in a very legal fashion. For example, if a parent came and said, the example she gave was, I'll make you a swimming pool, get my child in. You know, that's that cannot be fair, right? And secondly, she said it broke the backs of the very strong system of central schools. Central school system was where you had a very good school in, in many uh, districts of the country where you got children in from the scholarships or something, which made that, which made it possible for rural schools also, rural students to have a chance if they are, merit, uh, if they are clever enough to get a very good education. If you listen to my autobiographical tales that I do with many people and my, my PhD research was on 10 writers. They explain how much getting into that school meant and they've become professors, they've become icons in this country simply through that chance. And uh, Dr. Manuratna says the 81 proposals broke the backs of a very good system that had existed, right? So devolution again, shifting, it sounds good on theory, shifts the power, but it really means the responsibility of getting resources was then shifted and, and, and the central point was made free of blame. Responsabilization, this example she gave was um, in grade 8. They also tried to do this in grade 8 once to make a choice between doing an academic, going the academic way or a vocational way. Right, and she says this grade 8 business only happened one, one year when they realized, you know, it's not fair. And she says, for me, you know, wording is everything. The wording determines in how you look at it, right? They gave the choice to grade 8 students to see whether you go the vocational way or the academic way. And she says, how is that a choice? Because that choice is absolutely determined by the economic strength that you have. For example, if I did not have enough wealth to pursue my PhD or whatever, I wouldn't have done it. So they say they crouch in the language of choice something that is not really a choice that many people can make that dependent on your economic strength and knowing the Sri Lankan context of respecting academia you naturally everybody would want people to do the go the academic way so this language of choice can be very very um, false kind of thing so um 
let's get back to um, devolution and responsabilization. I'm not going to, I'm trying to keep my video short so that, you know, you will uh, get the, get the gist of what she says. So she explains it beautifully, giving examples of what's happening in, um, in the Sri Lankan context. We always make it about choice. But um, really, the system hasn't changed. We tell you need to fit the corporate world. And we fail to see whether the corporate world is going to give up their belief in class. My, my simple answer is probably not. Okay? We don't question it at that level. We always make it about the failure of the, the student to fit in. And very often this fitting in had problems because she says earlier when we, it was, it, it was um, discussed to make education vocational, what people were gearing like in the 70s, what people were gearing at 80s, 70s, early 80s was state employment. How do you make a contribution to the state sector? How would you make them effective? How would you make a person fully uh, like strong enough to help the state. But later, in the late 80s, 90s, that discourse changed. Now we are trying to fit them into the private sector, to private, the private business world. And anyone in the university would know how much we are emphasizing soft skills, how to fit them into fit a different mold. Okay, and she says something beautifully that, you know, with all uh, whatever language we crouch it with, right? The system now demanded that a student adopts an imitative identity that often clashed with the more myopic rural cultural habits that most rural students acquired in their homes and villages. We are teaching them an imitative personality because the, the business world will not accept something else. So we do not question the business world ever. We question the education that doesn't mold this imitative, I don't know, kind of person to fit in there. So Dr. Manuratna's article is important because she says we gloss over the real issue and we make it about education and employment and mismatch. We hardly talk of class. So even in English, I'm trying to put that right out there. You know, we forget that the issue is not actually what we laugh at. That's why I'm saying don't laugh at it. There's something seriously problematic in ridiculing someone who doesn't know English because once you're aware of the class and the systemic injustices that lie beneath everybody's ability to be equally fluent, you might understand that the laughter is not just unkind, it's unbelievable. Why would you do it? Right? So I have given a very brief introduction concentrating on things especially on English because that is where I am coming from. But this is about education in general. A very significant article because if you think about responsabilization and devolution, what it has done and why people objected. And this was in 1981, but they were put in place. These problems, these issues are still valid in Sri Lanka. If you are if you're in the academic field or if you are aware of what's going on, you see the problems haven't shifted yet. The discourse is the same, right? So that is why I thought it's important that we think about this article now and please listen to the interview that follows. I will put the link in the comment section on this video. Please have a look because what you will learn will help you. It will help if you are a student to understand your positioning, the reason you mustn't feel bad and the reason you need to really work hard should you go there. And if you are somebody who's been judging people, on, you know, laziness and lack of motivation. Please look at the problem deeper. Of course, there will be uh, other issues here, but it's important that you know it because it might give you a chance to look at things differently, which is really what education is all about. Thank you very much.